Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're talking about my lead code strategy guide. This is meant to be an end to end approach, which will take you from zero to hopefully hired. Again, this is just my personal approach that's worked well for me. Don't feel like this is the only way. The most important thing to do is to do what works best for you and your personal situation. There is no one size fits all approach to lead code. This video will have no empty promises, no false hope, no sugarcoating, and no trying to sell you some course. This is just the hard truths and some actionable steps. Last thing, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Nobody likes a freeloader. All right, let's get into it. Before we even open leadcode.com for the first time, we need to first understand where we are on our journey. Am I a beginner? Have I been lead coding for a while? Am I a former Fang employee that's just looking for a new job? If you're this last bucket, this is going to be the easiest for you. You probably just need to do a blind 75 to refresh your general knowledge and then just study the questions of the company that you want to work for. You know how the process works. You've done this before. You don't really need this video. For the other people, the beginners and those who have been leak coding for a while but don't yet work in Fang, you need to ask yourself some questions. Is Fang even right for me? Why do I want to work there? Is it for money? Is it for prestige? Is it for my career? Can I even get an interview with my current experience and CV? If the answer is no, you can still leak code for fun or enjoyment, but if you can't get an interview, you may be wasting your time. Next thing you want to do, and this is a big one, is how much time do I have to dedicate to this? Am I a student with a ton of free time to study daily, or do I already have a job, family, and responsibilities that will hinder my preparation? Am I comfortable with feeling stupid and like, I'll never get this on a near daily basis in the beginning? Do I have the discipline to stick with this even though I want to quit and I feel it's too hard? Do I have the perseverance to make it through the tough times? Am I okay with the fact that I can potentially spend hundreds of hours and on this and potentially not even get an interview or fail all of my interviews? This is a real possibility and you must understand that nothing is promised no matter what anyone tries to tell you. The last question you need to ask yourself is, if I do fail, will I have the mental fortitude to pick myself up, dust myself off, and give it another go in a few months' time, or will I give up completely? Please ask yourself these questions, and if you still want to proceed, let's go to the next step. Okay, so we decided that we want to work on Fang, and we're going to embark on the Leak Code journey. The next thing we need to do is set some realistic expectations. Please understand that the process will take months, perhaps even over a year. Don't think it's going to happen over not because it simply won't. Be prepared to spend the first three to six months learning the fundamentals and basics of lead code. After that, you'll probably spend another three to six months mounting a proper preparation for your interviews. Be prepared to practice daily. Lead code is a muscle. You use it or you lose it. Your skills will atrophy if you're not consistent. Please don't be delusional. Unless you're some super genius with an IQ of 170, you aren't just going to solve the blind 75 question list or neat code 150 and suddenly get a job at Google. It just doesn't work that way. You must pay the price of going through the lead code grind and understand that it's going to be hard. Getting good at lead code requires rewiring your brain to think in new ways that you may not have been exposed to before in your work or university. It will be difficult in the beginning, but it does get easier provided you stay consistent and you're an active learner who works on their mistakes. Okay, we are now ready to learn the fundamentals, and this should take around three to six months. If you've never lead coded before, then you need to get a hang of how the questions work and the common data structures and problem solving patterns. A lot of lead code relies on repetition and similar algorithms, which you can apply to multiple different questions. So exposing yourself to as many questions as possible is going to make this possible. A lot of lead code, as like I said, relies on similar solution patterns to different questions. So by learning the fundamentals, you set yourself up for success later on because you can apply what you learned and start spotting patterns. What you want to do in the beginning is start with the most popular easy questions to build up your familiarity with the basic algorithms. Don't worry about being able to solve things perfectly on the first go. Try your best and look at the solutions when you're stuck. But if you do look at the solutions, make sure you actually understand them and are not just copy pasting. This is not learning. And a pro tip, if you are stuck and you're looking at a solution, but you can't understand how it works, then draw things out by hand and walk through line by line, annotating your variables and updating them as you go through your code. This will help you actually understand things and be able to understand it line by line. 
in this phase, you want to be solving as many easies and mediums as you can. It's all about exposure. Don't worry about the hards yet. It's not time. Ideally, you don't spend more than 20 minutes on a question if you're stuck. Feel free to just look at the solution at that point. When you're looking at solutions, make sure you have that aha moment where you're looking at it, maybe you're trying to grasp it for a while and then it just clicks. That's the moment you want and that will actually ensure that you understand it because you can always think back to that aha moment and actually solve the question in the future instead of looking at the solution once, not understanding it, and then the next time you see the question, it's like you'd never seen it before. You want to have that aha moment so you can recall it later on. <clears throat> and my last advice would be to identify question chains. And question chains are problems which are very similar to each other, and you can take the knowledge from one question and apply it to the other. For example, there's a string of questions for binary trees called path sum. Path sum one is pretty easy. It's just a simple traverse through a tree. And then there's path sum two, path sum three, path sum four, and I think even goes up to path sum five. And they all have the same approach. They generally have the same algorithm to solve them. You just need to change a few things in during the tree traversal. So you can take the knowledge from one question and apply it to the other. How do you identify these question chains? Obviously, if the question is marked like, you know, problem one, two, three, four, five, then obviously that's a chain. But what you can do is when you submit a solution, you can actually look at the problems that LeetCode suggests you for similar questions, and they will generally be uh, very close to the problem you just solved. And you can just keep following the chain of questions they keep suggesting you, and you can apply the same kind of approach. You know, if it's a binary search question, they'll suggest you another binary search question, and then you can use what you just learned in that question and the next one and the next one and the next one, and you can build your knowledge and just stay on track. Okay, so let's move to the next stage. So you spent maybe three to six months learning the basics. What now? This step is sort of optional, but I would recommend it for beginners, and that is actually to test what you learned. And the way that you're going to do this is actually by resetting your lead code session. And you can do this in your account tab, and you can basically just wipe your, all of your previously submitted uh, solutions and reset lead code basically to its default state. And what you want to do here is just redo most of the questions you did when learning the fundamentals. And what you want to do here is ask yourself, you know, can you still solve them from memory? Are there particular types of questions or particular types of data structures that you struggle with? These will indicate that, you know, you have a gap in your knowledge and you need to do more questions in that category to basically buff up your understanding. Chances are during the fundamental building stage, you saw so many questions, you saw so many solutions that things just fell through the cracks or there were things that you didn't quite understand that well. Now is the time to actually go back and spend some time to figure out your weaknesses and try to improve them. Okay, now that we learned the fundamentals, we went back and basically revisited all the questions we did to basically understand where we are, what our gaps are, and what we still need to prepare. Now, before we start our preparation, what we need to do is ask ourselves, where do we want to work? Which fang do I really actually want to work for? The more you can narrow this down, the better and easier your prep will be. If you try to prep for all the fangs at the same time, you're going to have a bad time. Insert that South Park meme here. The more you spread yourself thin, the harder it will be and the lower your chances of any individual offer. If you can, try to at least get in the application pipeline such that you already have an offer of a phone screen from your recruiter. Then you can set your interview date months down the line to give you time to prepare. Otherwise, you run the risk of preparing for nothing, and this is always a risk. You can prepare for as many companies as you want, as little companies as you want. You may not actually get the phone screen, and you're just sat there holding the bag, and you don't have anything to show for it. As we'll see in the next step, a serious preparation really requires a lot of practice and memorization. So the more you need to memorize, the more companies you told yourself you want to work for, the harder it is to actually prepare because you're going to have to memorize more and more questions. And there's only so much you can fit in your brain. So try to narrow it down as much as possible. Step six is to ignore the distractions of other questions and focus only on that company or company's questions. Now is the time to start working through the company's top asked questions. At this point, if you don't already have LeetCode Premium, now is the time to buy it so you have access to this feature. Without it, 
most likely you will not pass because most of the questions are gated behind leak code premium and it's worth the money it's 150 bucks if you get the fang job you're going to be making hundreds of thousands of dollars don't be a cheapie just buy it now how many do you want to solve i would say the top 50 at the minimum top 75 to be safe you can even go to 100 if you've only picked one company and you have a lot of time on your hands and you really want to make sure that you cover all of your bases when you're solving the questions, make sure that you fully understand the solution and that you can also explain the time and space complexity. You cannot half ask this part, you must learn both. If the optimal solution is just too difficult for you to understand, especially for some of the hard tier questions, it's often okay to go with the suboptimal solution. It's better to have solution that you can actually code up and understand and explain than trying to memorize the most optimal but not actually understanding it and as soon as the inter interviewer asks you a question about your solution you just completely fall apart because you don't know what's going on you just memorized it line for line now if you opted for more than one company this is the time where time and brain space will become an issue there's only so much you can fit in your head right Reduce the amount of questions to the top 30 or 40. Otherwise, you're likely going to start forgetting questions due to information overload. Now, this is a risk to reward trade off. The less questions you do, the easier prep and faster prep you'll have. But on interview day, if you get, say, the 45th most common question and you only do the top 40, well, then you're shit out of luck because now you don't know how to solve it and likely you're going to spend way too much time trying to come up with a solution. You may not even get a solution and that could fail your interview right there. So it's a risk to reward trade off. The more time you put into it, the more likely you're going to cover your bases. But if you don't have that much time, then you're going to have to decide how many questions you feel comfortable with and can you solve the other ones if it comes up that's on you okay step seven is when you have an interview scheduled maybe this is a phone screen maybe this is the on-site interview what now you've already worked through the top 50 and 75 questions you can understand the solutions you can explain them line by line and you can explain the time space complexity now is the time to start memorizing Unfortunately, if you haven't realized it already, interviews are about memorization. We learn the solutions so we can explain them, but on interview day, this is not the time to figure things out or to forget how to solve a question. You need to have it memorized line by line. This will ensure that you can focus more on the important parts like scoping out the problem, trading off potential solutions, explaining code line by line, and not being a nervous mess who talks way too fast and unclearly, etc, etc. What I personally did before my meta interview was I reset my leak code session and I solved as many Facebook tagged questions as I could in three to four hours. I'd then come back the next day and do more and more until I finished the list. I repeated this process every day until interview day. By the end, I could perfectly solve all the top 75 in less than six hours, explaining them line by line as I coded them, and I was able to discuss the time and space complexity. You might be thinking, is this overkill? Yeah, maybe, but I got the job and that's all that matters. Okay, step eight, interview day. It's interview day, what do I do now? For starters, please make sure you get a good night's sleep and you're well rested. Eat a good meal beforehand, not too heavy or you're gonna be sleepy and have some coffee or tea if you drink it to perk you up. At this point, don't bother trying to learn more questions. It's just too late. What you know, you know, don't overthink things. You either prepared well enough or you didn't. 30 minutes before your interview is not gonna save you from bad prep. It's just gonna get you in a very bad mental state. I have a full video on how to approach a question in an interview. Link will be in the description below. But to summarize, the first thing that we wanna do is obviously read the question. It may be slightly altered to the lead code version. Make sure you're not actually solving a different question. A lot of the times people will actually get a question. They're like, okay, the, it's this question that I've solved before, but they don't realize or they don't ask enough clarifying questions, which is the next step to realize that they're actually solving something else. And then it's just blatantly obvious that you're just splurting out memorization instead of actually um, the question you're asked to solve. So ask some clarifying questions, clarify the inputs, what are the expected outputts, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe go through some test cases if they have them. 
The next thing you want to do is discuss any potential solutions with your interviewer and agree on which one to proceed with. Sometimes if let's say the iterative solution is too simple, they might ask for a recursive or vice versa. Never assume that your interviewer just wants whatever solutions in your head. Discuss the potential solutions, what their trade-offs are, and then get agreement on what to go forward with. Once you have this, you can then start coding. And as you're coding, make sure you walk through every single line that you write exactly what is happening line by line. This is what you should be communicating clearly to your interviewer. Similar to how I solve questions on this channel, I walk you through every single line, what we're doing on that line, why we're doing it. This is the level of communication you wanna have with your interviewer. Don't just sit there in silence. You wanna have them involved and engaged with you in the interview process so they know exactly what you're thinking at all times. When you're done, you can dry run one of the test cases Maybe this was given to you. Maybe you defined it uh, yourself in this step here. After that, you can give the time and space complexity analysis. And pro tip, don't ask for them to request this of you. Do it proactively. As soon as you finish the test cases or as soon as you finish the code, talk about the time and space complexity. Interviewers love to see that you're actually proactive about this and you're not just sitting there like, I don't know, ask me about it. It shows that you understand the time and space complexity of your algorithm and you're not afraid to explain it. Okay, then we get to a bit of a controversial one and that is what happens if your interviewer asks you, have you seen this question before? Now, it's really up to you how you wanna answer this. Me personally, I always lie. I don't give a fuck. I, if you ask me, I'm, you know, I haven't seen this or I've seen something similar. I'm not about to risk um, losing a question that I've seen before and I know how to do for something much harder because I told the truth. Whether or not you think that's ethical, that's up to you. Me, I will always lie when uh, asked this question because if I have an easy question that I know how to solve, I'm not gonna potentially fuck it up for myself and get a question that I may not know how to solve. Maybe they'll call you out on it and say, okay, well, this guy clearly knew this question ahead of time. He didn't uh, tell the truth, but most likely they'll just have you do a follow-up question or a follow-up interview if they think you just memorized the solution. Um, but me, again, personally, I always lie and just say I haven't. Um, and this happened to me twice in my meta interview. Lied both times, didn't really matter. So up to you. Uh, if you don't pass because of it, don't blame me. If you pass because of it, you know, whatever. Uh, it's up to you, you decide. The last step is getting your interview result. Maybe you got an offer, maybe you didn't. If you did, congratulations, your journey's done. Unless you have another interview lined up, then you're finished. You don't have to touch leak code for a long time. You can pat yourself on the back for all the hard work and accomplishment and enjoy your new job. You earned it. If you didn't get an offer, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. And as a matter of fact, most people probably fail their first go at a FANG interview. Maybe you didn't prepare well enough. Maybe the pressure just got to you or you got unlucky with the questions. It happens. Don't beat yourself up about it. Take some time away from lead code and come back to it when you want to mount another attempt. Just remember that the longer time you take away, the harder it will be to get your brain back into lead code mode when you return. And that's all. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and got something useful out of it. Again, this is just my personal approach. It may not work for you. Do whatever you feel is best for yourself. If you have any questions or want to discuss it further, why not join our Discord? There'll be a link in the description below and engage with the community and me there. Like, comment, subscribe if you made it this far. Thanks for watching and happy lead coding. See you in the next one.